Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV and today we are taking a look at the sequencer in Zill's lab. Since this synth emulates analog gear, the sequencer is one of the coolest features in it. It sounds super good, or the results of it sound super good. We are going to talk about how to set it up and then give a couple examples. We are not going to hit every knob and feature or we would be here a while. The big idea of the sequencer is that it can output many control signals at the same time and send them to different places via the matrix and sequencer tabs to affect the output. There are a couple things we need to get out of the way before we can make those really cool connections. First, you need to start up the sequencer. You can do this by using an event via the trigger panel down at the bottom of the synth, or you can manually start and stop it with the start and stop buttons directly on the sequencer panel. Second, stopping this can sometimes be a bit confusing when you're starting out. You generally are gonna wanna hit the stop button manually. You could always automate this via CC automation later. Third, you will see a bunch of letters with boxes on each side labeled edit and view. Each letter corresponds to a separate output. You can only edit one layer at a time, but can view many letters or layers at a time. You will see a color code for each letter, letting you know what signal command goes with what letter or sequence. Fourth, there are two zoom views. One shows a percentage view, which is useful for triggering things like filter and volume envelopes, while the other shows a piano roll for sending out note data, which is something you are probably going to want to do. Fifth, you see there are three knobs here. They each say sustain, implying that there's only really three sequences, but we have many letters. Going to the matrix tab shows us what letters go with what sequences. Sixth, we probably want Tempo Sync on. Seventh, we probably also want Sequencer Monophonic on. Eighth, we should set the number of steps we desire in the tempo of our sequencer with the two nested knobs in the sequencer section. Finally, ninth, we should consider our slew rate. We see we have three slew rates or three sequences. This is just, it's kind of like portamento, but it's not quite portamento. But it, you could view it as a smearing from one piece of data to the next piece of data, as opposed to directly going to that piece of data. The effect is very audible. At this point, we could do many things. We could set up a sequencer to control the pitch of some oscillators. If you want to trigger notes via an envelope, you can do so by connecting a sequencer to an envelope in the matrix. You could set up polyphony by using many sequences together and sending them to different oscillators. And 
we very quickly can get pretty dang crazy with sound design. There are a ton of presets to get you started, and now you know the needed basics to modify them to your liking. Just knowing the routing is, is kind of a battle, but once you understand how the routing works, just doors open creatively. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day. Yeah.